right, folks. Nine Tone Nelson here, out for a ride on a gorgeous day. Temps are supposed to be close to 50. I think 47 is the high here. And um, it's beautiful. It's sunshiny. It's dry. They didn't uh, put any salt down recently, uh, and most of the snow is gone, as you can see. So I decided to take a little trip around the block. The only thing about today that's a little different is it's a little windy. It's not as bad as it was the uh, other day when I rode, when I had gusts of about 20 miles an hour, and across this little plane here was forcing me to ride sideways, practically, which I've practically done before. And that's what I wanted to talk about today, riding in windy conditions. Not all of us have done it. Some of us prefer not to. It's all to you. And uh, it is a personal preference and wouldn't argue with anyone if they said, you know what, it's too windy to ride today. I don't have the same level of concern as some people do. I may have a higher level of concern than others, but I know that I've been caught in some really windy conditions. And the first time through, boy, did, uh, did the pucker factor really come into play. Didn't know what to do. I was riding across some plains, and the wind gusts from the right side of me were so intense it was frightening I was practically sideways fighting the wind tucked down onto the bike trying to keep myself from flying off the road and again it was the first time I had encountered such a thing I guess whatever I did worked out I survived didn't get blown off the road but I wasn't sure what I was doing and what I mean by that is yeah I kept the bike straight and on the road but I didn't know what procedures I was following I didn't know exactly what I was doing and you know panic set in a little bit and thankfully I had a long straight road ahead of me and I didn't have to do much turning and I you know I pulled through but again what was I doing how was I maneuvering the bike to stay on the road it didn't come into mind until much later and uh, every time I go out and ride in high gusts, I get reminded again, you got to keep yourself kind of loose. You got to keep yourself kind of um, a part of the bike, but not connected to it with uh, you know, a steel grip. And you also have to do quite a bit of additional steering. And that steering is going to seem counterproductive but essentially you're going to steer in the direction of the wind the, w the direction the wind is coming from so if I'm getting a blast from my right side I'm going to counter steer to my right side and look at what it does it causes me to lean and it causes me to lean more than what the wind is causing me to already lean because it will do that you are going to be bounced around in your lane, you're going to be bounced along, around on the road, and you're going to wonder, how am I going to handle this? Right now I'm getting some gusts from my right. Thankfully they're not so strong that I really have to work against them, but if I'm getting pushed to the left of the road, I'm going to have to steer back to the right of the road. And just like any other steering we would do, that would require some counter steering. And it will give you a, a little bit of a fright. Um, the fact that the bike is leaning even more so. Yeah, you're going to feel like it's going to come out from under you maybe. And it does feel that way. Yeah, have confidence in yourself, have confidence in your tires. They will hold. The bike is heavy. It will stay planted. Most bikes, I should say. As I, as I say that, I realize, you know, maybe somebody out there on a very light dirt bike might argue otherwise, and they're right. Uh, the point, though, is the bike has its girth and it has its ability to stay in place. If you are out on a very light bike on a day like that, 
I would say maybe uh, reconsider. But again, the idea is be aware of, of, of what you're dealing with. You've got something that is pushing you about, a uh, force of nature that has no rhyme or reason at that moment. And if you're in traffic, you're going to find yourself coming across some larger vehicles, SUVs, box trucks, tractor trailers, and all of them are going to really put a change into the process at that moment because they're going to have that wind whip around them and change how it affects you. The angle it's attacking from, the whether it's pushing you, pulling you, forcing you to a side that you were fighting against a second ago, you've got to be on your toes. No pun intended. And give yourself the opportunity to relax, because if you've got a death grip on your handlebars, if you've got a death grip with your knees on, on the bike, become a solid piece with that bike, I don't think you're going to do as well as you might think. There are people out there that will argue otherwise. I, I've seen some motovloggers out there say, that's what you should do. And I've seen others say, absolutely not. And I'm going to say, be fluid. Adapt to the moment. It's never going to be the same animal in every case, but have an idea of how to react. There might be some moments where you are going to want to get a tighter hold. There are going to be some other moments where you don't. I lean more towards the latter. I try to stay loose on the bike. Certainly I don't want to allow myself to get blown off if the gusts are of that strength, but I certainly don't want to become a large, make the, let me rephrase that, I don't want to make the bike a larger object by becoming a sail, strongly attached to it. All that's going to do is give the wind something more to push against and cause you to be redirected. So be a little loose, flow side to side, have a comfortable grip, don't wear your, yourself out by holding on for dear life. It's, it's really not that severe of a situation. The bike's gonna try to keep going straight no matter what. Why? We all know that the two wheels on this thing are huge gyroscopes. And what do gyroscopes do? They try to maintain their, their position. They don't want to be pushed off, blown off course. And when they do, they react, depending on what, act, uh, what angle and how strong of a force. But that's where your input comes in. You redirect that, the bike will stay upright. You'll just go along with it as you normally would aware of the fact that it's going to be a lot of input that you need to put in during the time that you're out in those winds. So you can do it. Anyone can do it. Must you? No. Comfort level is a big factor. I happen to be a little comfortable with it because I've had the experience and I've built the confidence. Not everyone has, not everyone will, and as I said before, that's up to you. I respect you in either case, and I would hope the same from you to me. But if you're interested in learning how, and having the experience, gaining the confidence, which I think is an important thing to do as a motorcyclist, go out there. Find a windier day than you would normally be comfortable with. Nothing too extreme, of course, but get out there and experience what it is to be in that situation. Experience your reactions. Adjust your reactions if needed. Be conscious of what's happening. In other words, practice. Just like everything else we have done to get to this point of riding, continue to practice. That will get you where you need to be and a level of comfort that will be beneficial. Well, I guess I was wrong about the salt. I'm going to have to give this one a bath as soon as possible. This is actually the worst I've seen in 
the last few days. So that flag over there is giving you an indication of what the winds are. Those reeds are doing the same. Not very strong, but strong enough to be apparent. I don't feel it. I am not really getting buffeted here. So my comfort level is high. I've been through it. I can do it. So I'm going to enjoy the rest of this ride. I'm going to have a little bit of fun in the sun today. And I'll bring you guys along. Hopefully you'll enjoy the scenery. Which is rather nice considering there's really no green. But uh, the trees are still kind of beautiful. So on another topic, I wanted to ask you guys, what do you think about uh, my content so far? Let me know in the comments. I would really appreciate that. I'm trying to do the best I can for you, me and for you, which is exemplified today. I wanted to give you guys some good video, some more content more frequently. And I needed to get out in the weather to do so. And hey, I'm not going to complain if I have to ride. But it's not always so easy. Sometimes I have to make an extra effort. Today was one of those days where I couldn't pass up the opportunity. It's been kind of shifty lately with the weather. So I was looking forward to this opportunity and I'm glad I got it. Speaking of my channel and its content, let me know what you would like to see. Let me know what kind of videos would interest you, whether it be along the lines of just scenic rides, which I will do, tooling in the garage, which I will do, interviews with other riders, which I hope to do, anything. I'm open to consider all the suggestions and Hopefully not only can you guys help my channel grow with those ideas, but hopefully you can help me grow. I, uh, I like challenges, and if I feel comfortable with one that I haven't done before, i give it a try. On another note, I've gone ahead and I've created a Patreon account, which I would appreciate if you guys would be willing to take a look at, consider donating towards. It'll help me with improving the quality of my videos and the content of my videos, my ability to travel farther, more frequently, and with less concern. So another thought for you guys. I've had a lot of people asking me about uh, my story of my name. And I am going to be providing that story and I'm definitely going to have fun doing so. But uh, considering the time that will be involved, it's going to take a bit. And I'd like to have a little nicer weather. But if I can get 100 subscribers who like to come back and review my videos, I will put that out sooner, as soon as possible. I'll get it out ASAP, actually weather permitting. I uh, would certainly like to be able to do that and I have a sense that you guys would appreciate it as well. So please tell your friends, tell your family, have them come back and watch my videos. You guys can come back and watch them as often as you like. Look for some details that might come up in later videos for trivia and potential opportunities to win some merchandise it would be cool I just saw a bunch of salt back there so I'm taking it easy on this turn but this is a gorgeous little run here so yeah guys free for all in the comments for ideas suggestions Always a free-for-all for new subscribers. Come on in and let me know you enjoy what I'm offering. I hope you do. Everybody's enjoying a beautiful day today. All kind of two-wheeled and bipedal opportunities today.
it's certainly gorgeous out here. Ah, wet, wetness. And the temperature today, like I said, very nice. Uh, I've got my heated gear on, but another one of those situations where it is not actually activated. Haven't turned it on, haven't needed to. I am perfectly content with my body temperature. Another thing I don't know if you've noticed, I've got a few extra cameras. Finally got my second GoPro 8 in, which is right there. And I'm very pleased with it. Should get some matching video quality with my helmet. And longer duration of the recordings. Wow, oh, more salt. I wasn't wasn't uh, very observant about the salt. I thought there was much less. You know, I'm being careful. I'm definitely going to be giving the ST a bath. So here, this is a situation not everybody likes to uh, deal with: divided highway. How do we do it safely? Especially when you have a blind hill over there. Nothing wrong with going halfway and sitting in the median. As long as you're not in the median. Okay, back on the road. So yeah, temps are nice, new cameras in, I'm uh, going to, I'm going to be getting some mounts to put the Hero 2 on, get a, an opposing view of the Hero 3, see how that looks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna deck out as much as I can, I guess. Nothing too extravagant. But certainly give us more sights, more views of the prettiness around us. I don't know how pretty you would consider this, but there are some nice scenic things out there in this area that I will be sharing. Some sights of the scenic areas out here, not just not just near home, but also just within the state, huh, within other states. And I'm going to go ride by a little one I found just recently, which uh, I haven't seen it outside of this weather, but uh, it's still a very nice little spot, rather scenic. I'm sure it's gorgeous in the summer, in the spring. Maybe we'll go back to it then just for comparison. So yeah, you can see some of the snow is still around. It's beautiful, I think. I love these old wooden fences. Old meadows, old buildings, antiquated area, it's gorgeous. Now this is, this is very, very beautiful out here. You can see the older homes, the newer homes, different style of homes. It's all gorgeous. You know, uh, along the lines of riding through some scenic areas, if you guys would like to know exactly where they are, 
let me know in the comments. I will do my best to post some information specific about those areas and I'll also start putting a map into the videos showing you my exact route. That way if you want to go and recreate your own little Nine Toe Nelson tour, you'll be able to do so. Now look at this. This is this is beautiful. Look at that. This is all just so quaint and quiet and whatever other descriptor you want to use. Look at this. This is this is nice. Wow, I wonder how many hours it took to put this wall together. Maybe we should ask Shirley. Check that out. That's nice. little peninsula here don't think I'm going to be able to get too much farther considering Lakeside homes are just beautiful. Uh oh, oh. got to turn around. Gorgeous. sailboat. That's an old puppy. Okay, we're going to avoid that ice. here for a second and take a good gander as to what's out there. Well, all right, folks, you know, I think this is a beautiful shot to end this video on. And uh, I want to thank you for joining me and hopefully you enjoyed coming along. As always, please feel free to subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications of when I release a new video. Tell your friends, come back and watch my content as often as you like, and 
post any comments or questions in the comment section below. And I'll go ahead and end this one as I always do. Please make sure to ride safe, ride smart, and have fun. Take care.